The next five guitar lessons that I'll be posting will be embedded into the TrueFire.com website and will be included in a published series for their next top guitar instructor contest. Student votes combined with judges' scores will determine TrueFire's next top guitar instructor and final rankings will be posted on their website. So follow the link in the description box and head over to TrueFire.com to check out all the instructor postings for their top 10 finalist submissions. Thanks for your support. I'm Andrew Watson from Creative Guitar Studio. Thanks for joining me for another one of my guitar lessons. This time around, we're going to be discussing a linear note movement that can occur during a chord melody progression. And this came to us as a question from Scott G. He's out in Charlotte, North Carolina. And he wrote in saying, I've been trying to make sense of how a melody line can move along with chords. I really like this. I believe that this is called chord melody. I'd like to know how to start making my own chord melody progressions. Could you break down the basic basics for how a moving melody line can be created along through a group of chords. Thanks from Scott G in Charlotte, North Carolina. Well, hey, thanks for writing in, Scott. You know, when it comes to gaining an understanding for how chords can be used as a basis for developing moving melody lines, we need to begin study of some primary arranging principles in respect to chords. See, chord tones, whether you may have noticed this or not, are always implying an ascending or descending movement on the upper tones or the lower tones of a chord voicing. So our first step is to become familiar with how we can control this through a better understanding of chord tones located in the inner voices of chord fingerings that we already know and that we're probably already using. So to get things started, let's have a quick look at some basic elements of how chords can imply stepwise moving melody. All right, in our first example, I have a series of chord changes here that are basically in the key of F major. The F is obviously the root. We're starting on the third chord of the key here. It's an A minor. And then we're going to progress through a series of chords in the middle here that will express a stepwise line as uh, done up as the treble note. And it is going to be functioning in this particular case as a series of tones. They're highlighted in blue here for you to see them clearly. 
Uh, it's going to be a series of tones, however, that are moving chromatically. So on the top part of uh, every chord, so the highest notes in the voicing, they're going to be these tones moving chromatically across every one of the chords till we finally come back into the resolution on the root of F. Now, if you're wondering theoretically what's happening here, there is a modal interchange chord showing up here, a uh, minor 5 chord uh, of the C minor 7, and then we have this 2 chord showing up here as a uh, power chord, so that's nothing too special. Uh, it, over in this measure, to to resolve, we're dealing with a tritone substitute, often also called flat five substitute, and that's giving us our nice pull here over to the uh root chord of F. <clears throat> now, there's a lot of theory involved, and there's also some uh, interesting uh, skills and techniques that I think are valuable. So just before we go any further with the progression, I'd like to go at the lower portion of the page here and just start covering some of these skills and techniques that I think are valuable. Uh, they're not entirely necessary in the beginning to do this. You could do this by ear. Uh, however, as you go and uh, progress, it would be valuable to know these. So the first one is know several fretboard patterns for the triads, the seventh chords, and even, of course, extensions, altered chords, Basically, the more chords you know, the more patterns on the fretboard you know, the better. Now, the next one is uh, of understanding your chord voicings and the order in which the chord tones may appear. In other words, understand chord construction. It's very valuable to understand how chords are built. Uh, the next one after that, decide whether your melodic line will be ascending or descending. It's a good idea to have that, you know, obviously planned out before you get rolling with this. And the last one is um, allow the melodic line to last long enough so that your listener takes notice of it. Uh, this could be uh, as little as three notes, although you know it can be a little bit nicer to have at least four notes that are moving down, either in a, a stepwise a melody line that's diatonic to a scale, or as we're seeing here in this example where it's chromatic. Sometimes the chromatic lines, you know, they're going to sound a little bit more jazzy as uh, as they progress. Um, so anyway, the idea is to determine the direction, you know, the compositional direction that you're going, and then start working on the arrangement. And like I had mentioned, it's great to know the theory of exactly what's happening. However, it's not 100% necessary. You can still do this by ear. It might take you longer. It might seem like a little bit more of a chore because you don't understand directions that could be occurring uh, in your head previous to uh, to going to the guitar fretboard. And of course, there's a, that other thing of technical ability. If you don't know a lot of chords, uh, it's going to take you a little bit longer to do this. So uh, anyway, now this example, as uh, as we've done it here, is focusing on a treble note moving on the top end of the chords. Let's take another look at this uh, scenario, but this time we're going to look at it as a bass note moving down below in the lower register. So let's do that next. Well, here in our second example, you can see we've got our uh, stepwise line expressed this time around as a bass note. So we're basically here in the key of A major, and uh, we're going to start on that uh, root note as a, a root position, A major chord. And uh, then again, the tones that are moving in the bass are all highlighted in blue. So we're going to see this drop down again. It's all chromatic as we go across the whole line here. We're moving down into the five chord of the key. Uh, however, it happens to be in uh, first inverse. So major thirds in the base of that chord, so we have an inverted uh, five chord. And then we're doing something quite interesting to create the um, chromatic movement after that. Now there would be a, a problem, obviously, in the key moving between the G sharp to the F uh, sharp tone. So what we did was uh, <coughs> we created this, um, or I created this uh, suspended fourth idea so that we could add in a G natural into that uh, D chord. And uh, I did it as an inversion as well, so the uh, sus4 tone is actually the tone in the bass and now we have the chromatic motion going from the G-sharp to the G-natural and then the G-natural down to an F-sharp, uh, which is of course this um, four chord, the uh, D major chord with the major third in the bass first inversion D major. And uh, after that we're into a modal interchange chord here with this uh, flat six major, the F chord coming in. Of course of that tone in the key center should be F sharp, but uh, over here it's F natural with a major quality on it, dropping us down a half step uh, root to root. So the F root dropping to the E root of that uh, five chord, uh, wrapping up the progression, giving us uh, an entire dropped chromatic line in the bass. I actually really like these sounds. I think bass note uh, linear uh, melody, a chord melody, is a very cool sound. Uh, I really enjoy you know, putting it into a piece of music. Um, all the same skills and techniques and so forth would still apply. Uh, obviously here, this uh, process of doing inversions is really valuable, you can see here, because um, you know if you didn't know how to do inversions, this would be just lost on you, I'm sure. Uh, however, you, know, you can still try this stuff out by ear. It doesn't matter. 
matter um, if you know or you don't know what chords you're playing, just uh, have fun with it. Although it's going to, of course, take you longer if you're not 100% sure of yourself and you don't have a lot of uh, uh, ideas that you can pull very quickly onto the fretboard. So anyway, this wraps up uh, both treble and bass note movement, linear chord tone movement. So let's uh, head over to the guitar fretboard next and run through some uh, examples I've put together so that you can begin working on this at home. So let's head to the guitar fretboard next. Well, when it comes to getting started with implementing stepwise linear moving melody lines around a chord harmony, the easiest thing to do is to just begin from uh, one chord shape. In, in our lesson here, we'll choose A major to get started with in this first example. And then you want to select an upper string, normally first or second strings. We'll go with second string for our, ex our example here. And then what you want to do is have a look at how the scale for that chord, in this case A major, so A major scale, uh, can be plotted out along the upper string. In our first example with this A major in fifth position, uh, example one of the handout as well, uh, take the A major chord and then notice how A major scale operates first ascending, and then also how it operates descending. So get that together first, understand and examine how the A major ascends and descends down that uh, second string. And then the next idea, it's in your handout as example two, uh, we'll use the ascending scale tones exclusively. And we're going to experiment with creating a series of various A major chord types that can move up the neck and trace the scale tones along the neck at the same time. So uh, let's go through this. We're going to start with A major. And then we're going to move up to an A major 13. Now we're going to have an A major 13, but with F sharp in the bass. And then we're going to have an A major triad chord with that A up on top, so that we had the movement of E, F sharp, G sharp, A through those chords of A major, A major 13, A major 13 with F sharp in the bass, and then the A major. Here they are one more time. Okay, now we're going to go the opposite direction. And we're going to head uh, down towards the headstock using A major style chords, but this time with a descending scale tone direction. Uh, keep in mind that when it all boils down to it, the chords that you decide to apply can be of any type, and they don't even necessarily have to be from the harmony of uh, key. Uh, you can look at all kinds of aspects of filler chords, and we'll get more into that concept in a, in a second or two. But for now, let's uh, just head to example number three here with the descending tones going through a series of uh, new chords. So we're going to start with A major, and then we're going to have like a G with A in the bass or an A9 sus, and then we're going to have A major with F sharp in the bass, and then we're going to have A suspended second. So here they are again. Isn't that a great sound? It's very cool to experiment with this. But next, I want to get into a little bit different direction here. I want to ex experiment with producing stepwise movement on top of a series of chords that will produce a little bit more chromatic effect. Uh, I'll have a series here of uh, half steps that will occur on the uh, second guitar string. We're going to travel, first of all, up from fifth to sixth to seventh. Then we're going to jump up to ninth and then we're going to resolve it into 10th fret A on the second string there. So to accomplish these movements, we'll bring into play those highly versatile dissonant family of chords, the uh, augmented and the diminished. And it all comes together to sound like this. It's in your handout as example number four. So it starts getting a little bit more jazzy with this movement. But it's a very slick sound, sounds really cool. Now next let's take a look into applying some chromatic work descending down the same second guitar string. This time our line will be moving chromatically from the fifth fret E note of that second string all the way down to the major third of the key, which will be the C sharp. And this can be found in your handout as uh, example number five. It goes like this. You can hear that chromatic movement. It's all the way down. Five, four, three, two. Dropping from the E to the E flat to the D. And then we have this C sharp note, the major third of that A. Here it is one more time. OK, 
Okay, so now, you know, when you begin trying this at home, be sure to always test out the use of these augmented and diminished chords for fillers in between the standard chords. They're very helpful when it comes to bridging the gap when you're creating any kind of stepwise linear guitar chord melody on the neck. You know, there's a lot of players who will ask me where the augmented or the uh, diminished chord, you know, should be used. And, you know, like it is with a lot of other musical melody and harmony ideas, you have to listen to songs, learn other players' stuff, and uh, get a handle on how other people have used it. But then again, you have to play them where it sounds right to you. You know, your ear will always tend to be the best judgment call as to where and when melodic or harmonic ideas are going to be best applied. But for the most part, you know, the biggest problem I find when working with my students, it tends to be in a lack of fretboard knowledge. You know, these students just simply don't know their chord shapes. You know, uh, so be sure to learn as many chord patterns as possible. So you always have lots of options and you can stay really versatile with your playing. And if you need them, I'll be including a few excellent versions of these augmented and diminished chord types in the handout for you. So you can start rehearsing them and getting them into your own guitar playing. Well, in my final example, I'm going to take a simple uh, B Dorian melody line here. I'm going to thicken it up by creating a harmonized chord riff which will follow through the melody line highlighting the curve of the melodic statement. You'll hear this kind of thing done in a lot of pop and rock tunes. You'll even hear it sometimes done in country western songs. And let's begin by learning the melody all by itself. You'll probably recognize it from the piece that I played at the start of this video and you'll find it in your handout as example number six. Okay, so from this melody, we'll go ahead and develop some chords that'll trace the line so that we can fatten up the sound, plus gain a thicker tone from the line without really requiring the need for maybe extra guitar tracks if you're in the studio or the addition of maybe another guitar player if you're doing a live gig. So the idea that we'll stick here uh, will be with that of maintaining the uh, B minor shape throughout 90% of this uh, phrase. And we'll wrap up on the final bar by way of just doing some uh, fourth and fifth intervals. So here's how it all comes together. It's a really cool thing to work out once you've uh, got a pre-established melody line. Start trying to mess around, you know, and just keep it simple with some of the harmonies and uh, see if you can fatten it up with uh, some chord punches and some uh, really linear chord melody work like this. Now, the tab for this riff, of course, will be found in your handout as example number seven. And you'll also want to keep in mind with any riff such as this one that happens to be diatonic or within the harmony of its key signature that you can layer other chord changes over top of this relatively static B minor sound. There's lots of options. In fact, I actually did this on the piece that I performed at the start of this video. I had a B a minor, well, really it's a B power chord, and then I did a, a G suspended, and then I went into an A suspended second, coming back to that B power chord. So over top of the riff, I had this going on. was fit against this idea. So be sure to make a worthwhile study of that piece. The chart for it is also in your handout. So have fun studying and experimenting with all this information. It's a lot of fun to study, to rehearse, and to, of course, uh, apply to a song. Well, you know, when it comes to harmonically tracking a moving melody line, whether with one chord quality or with a series of chords, it's very helpful to have some pre-established skills in place to be successful at this. And these skills uh, would include, of course, a basic understanding for scale patterns across the guitar fingerboard, uh, a solid ability for the uh, chord shapes and the common uh, realms of triad, seventh, extended, and altered chords. Plus, it also sure wouldn't hurt to be knowledgeable with your basic harmony and theory 
principles of uh, especially chord families and substitution principles. Now, if you're not quite there yet with all the music theory, this doesn't mean that you still can't have a go at building these types of lines. Just use your ear, you know, play what sounds good and have fun with the composing and arranging. If you study music theory and all of its principles in time, all of that music theory and the scale concepts will eventually start to make more sense. Well, anyway, once again, thanks for watching. Have fun working on all this information. You can download the handout and an MP3 jam track for this lesson over at my website at andrewwasson.com. And you can follow me on Twitter, through Facebook, and on my other guitar blog YouTube channel. The links are all in the description box below for you. Take care, everybody, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.